I want people to see that that justice was done and that it can be corrected. It just has to be in the right hand. It's just people need to hear the story. We're a team of digital journalists searching for the truth. This time, we're investigating the sexual assault of a young school teacher in South Georgia. Sonny Baradia is spending life in prison for the crime after being convicted in 2003. Guilty. Guilty, yeah. What happened inside the teacher's apartment on that Sunday afternoon was horrific. But new DNA evidence is raising questions about who's to blame. Now, Sonny's lawyers have one last ditch motion called habeas corpus to try and get that evidence in front of a jury. To watch this happen to Sonny, knowing that this person was innocent, it was indescribable. Well, I can't even put it in words. While some people only serve one year for a sexual assault, Sonny Baradia got the max. He has at least three prior felony convictions, all related to operating a chop shop, or a place that sells stolen auto parts. Georgia's three strikes law required the judge to sentence Sonny to life. When they said guilty, it's like my knees shook. I've never felt like that before. He just crushes you. We went back to the Savannah area to find Sonny's original attorney. Hey, Caleb. Hey. I'm Jeremy. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Caleb Banks is where this case starts and may end. If a judge rules that Mr. Banks' legal representation of Sonny is the reason a jury found him guilty, Sonny gets a new trial. We asked Banks why he believes the jury convicted Sonny. The victim was confident that the man on the stand, Sonny Baradia, was the man who attacked her. Never wavered. She didn't cry or boo-hoo or turn away or anything like that. She was uh, pretty straightforward. On the stand, the victim clearly identified the distinct blue, white, and black batting gloves, similar to these, that her attacker wore. I didn't know to have the, the gloves or anything else tested with DNA. I thought you needed some bodily fluids for DNA. Investigators, however, did look for sources of DNA at the crime scene, but found none. They didn't test the gloves either. Nearly a decade later, Sonny's new attorney ran unidentified DNA found on the gloves through a criminal database. The results were shocking. Here is that official test result. DNA data from evidence in these cases has been matched to the following convicted offender, Sterling Flint. Not only is the DNA not Sonny's, but it belongs to the man who testified against him, his co-defendant, Sterling Flint. No jury has ever seen this scientific evidence. Instead, they made their decision based in testimony. Jury foreman Ainsley Aris told us he was confident in the guilty verdict. Guilty. Guilty, yeah. It seemed pretty clear, yeah, beyond a reasonable doubt for us that, uh, that it was him. But what we were about to tell him would shake his confidence. Someone thought to test the gloves and the DNA matched to someone else, not the man who was convicted, but to a man named Sterling Flint, who testified against Sonny. Wow, just um, hearing what you guys told me now, that, that's, that is, that is, that's, that's quite shocking. That's, you know, something, something needs to be done about that. Yeah, that's, that's alarming, wow. We're supposed to have the best justice system in the world, and that's, you know, it's, it's flawed, I would say, most definitely. Um, and again, if, that's, if that is the case, then there, a jury needs to see that. Patience is a virtue, one that I don't have. We waited weeks to get a glimpse into Sonny's life in lockup. Finally, it arrived. Sonny, in his own words, from inside a world that I can't even wrap my head around. Inside that envelope, what it's like to serve a life sentence without parole. Each day I make it, barely. I'm hanging by a thread. Each morning I wake up to these prison walls in the company of men that I would not choose as friends. My time and my life are totally controlled and hopeless. All have forgotten me. As soon as I open my eyes, I'm tired. I'm so angry and hurt that utter madness can't be far away. While Sonny lives in limbo, a key witness begins to doubt what really happened that day. Makes me feel like an idiot. Do you think that the wrong man could be in jail? 